Now we're going to set up the IPMI application by clicking on the Java shortcut on the desktop. When the window first opens up, we're going to go to File and Discover IPMI Device. Under the Detect button, it lists a series of ISP addresses. We're going to choose 192.168.0.13 because that is our local ISP address. Under the Network and Sharing Center, under Adapter Settings, under NIC1, Properties, IPv4, and Properties, we'll see that it is in fact the local ISP address of our device. After we've selected our ISP address, we'll hit OK and it will automatically start searching the network for IPMI devices. As I stated before, Intelligent Platform Management Interface, or IPMI, is proprietary to Supermicro. So if your computer does not have this type of technology, then don't worry about this. Once the search function is finished, by pressing shift select, we can select all of the ISP addresses. As you notice, I'm leaving out 113 because as you remember from our BIOS section, it is the IPMI address of the local workstation. By double clicking on the ISP, it pulls up the login screen. The generic password is admin admin, all caps. Once we've logged in to all of our nodes, then we'll be able to turn them on. By selecting the group management and click dragging over all of the ISP addresses, we can now turn on all of our nodes at the same time by pressing the power up button. Once we've powered up, we can go back to the individual management and go to the tab marked KVM console. By pressing on the launch KVM console, it opens up the kernel-based remote desktop. Where we now have access to share files, create new files, and adjust settings. It looks like I didn't turn my server off correctly last time. Not only does IPMI support kernel-based remote desktops, but it also allows you to observe different sensor settings on the remote computer. Such as the fan RPM, the voltages of the various devices, the system temperature, and power supply alerts. As you noticed, you can also power up and power down the IPMI device from the individual management as well as the group management. The group management also allows you to see sensor settings such as temperatures, fans, voltages, and warnings. It also has a command prompt text console if you want to enter basic code. You can refresh the screen 
every 60 seconds or just by pressing the button. As you noticed, these kernel-based remote desktops seem to take up a lot of space. So if you want to change the size of the kernels, you need to go to the Options tab up at the top Under Preferences, Display, you can lower the size to 75 or 50%, whichever suits your needs. Then under the Windows tab, you can turn off the checkbox for Auto Resize Window. This allows you to resize the window, freeing up more of your desktop. If you do not change these options, however, you will not be able to resize the window. Having the remote desktop feature allows you easy access to tell if your network renders are actually working. By checking in the task manager under performance, you can see the CPU output. So although it's difficult to read the text at 75%, you can see the CPU usage just fine. Under the network tab and the file explorer in Windows, you can see that all of our nodes have showed up under the network section, as well as our IPMI device which is labeled as SMCI. If you're having difficulty showing the different nodes that you've entered, or you've entered more nodes after you originally checked your screen, hit refresh and it will reload the settings on the network tab. If your computers aren't showing under your network tab, then the software renders for both After Effects and Autodesk will not work correctly when integrated with the Mental Ray standalone. Once we've set up our Java based kernel, we want to save our settings. This will save all of the ISP addresses and the passwords next time we open the program up. As you can see, once you power down the nodes, they no longer show up under the Network tab in the File Explorer. Once you've closed the program down, you can see that the kernels are still open and you have to close them individually.